Welcome to Textbook Engineering Problem, where we explore complex engineering problems and discuss different methods for solving them. In this video, I'll be breaking down a problem and discussing different ways to tackle it. However, keep in mind that there is no one correct path for some of these solutions, and I encourage you to share your own insights and thoughts in the comments. Together, we can learn and improve our problem-solving skills. So sit back, grab a notebook, and let's dive into today's problem. Today we're doing problem number 5.5 from Elementary Principles of Chemical Processes, 3rd edition. The problem says, use the ideal gas equation of state to estimate the molar volume in meters cubed per mole and the density of air in kilograms per meter cubed at 40 degrees Celsius and a gauge pressure of 3 atmospheres. Okay. The ideal gas equation of state is this equation right here, okay? And uh, V with a little bar underneath stands for the molar volume, okay? So that's volume divided by moles. Volume over moles, okay? That's what that means. So if we're just solving for what the molar volume is, then we have RT over P, okay? R is the gas constant. P is in atmospheres that they gave to us. I'm going to change that into Pascal's. Okay, because um, Pascal's is the SI um, unit. Okay, uh, temperature they gave to us in Celsius. Okay, you cannot use you cannot use Celsius. T Celsius is not an absolute temperature scale. You have to use an absolute temperature scale when you're using this equation. Okay, so we have to convert that into Kelvin. Okay, Con convert that into Kelvin. Now we have R, P, and T. This is the molar mass, or the, the molar volume of, uh, of the air, okay? And then they want us to convert this into a mass, okay? In order to do that, we need to know what the molar mass of air is. Okay, so here, I just want to, I made one adjustment. Um, I forgot to put the little uh, minus sign there, okay? So, so I fixed that up with a little minus sign there. Um, um, this is the molar mass of air, okay, so that's kilograms per kilomole. Um, our answer is in meters cubed per mole, mole, okay, not kilomole. So we're, we need to do a units conversion here. Um, we're taking our moles and we're turning them into kilograms, okay. So kilomole per kilogram is equal to this, and then for every kilomole there are 10 to the 3 moles, okay. So you multiply all that out and you get 0 0.296 that's meters cubed, because we have meter cu meters cubed on the top, per kilogram. This is the specific volume. That's what the little carrot is. If you invert that, one over this value, you get the density, okay? And that, that's what they asked for. They asked for the density, kilograms per meter cubed, okay? So that's 3.38. We compare that to water, it should be about a thousand times different. And yeah, it's about a thousand times different, okay? The air density is very low. Water density is liquid. It's a lot heavier, okay? Well, that is it for problem number 5.5. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful in your problem-solving journey. Remember, there are other routes you can take to arrive at the same correct answer, and I encourage you to leave a comment with any additional insights or questions you may have. Also, if you have any specific engineering problems you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. Your feedback is valuable, and I look forward to continuing the conversation with you. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more engineering problem-solving videos. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.